Christmas in Lusk. From a number of the older people of Lusk, one got a picture of Christmas activities from as far back as 1910. They said Christmas was enjoyed in a simple, pious way for the most part by the majority of the people. The standard of living was low, money was scarce, people were poor and proud. Not much different from any Irish rural village. There was a religious reverence towards Christmas, where the cleansing of the soul for the year's end was a desired duty. Old animosities would be suspended for the peaceful period, or at least until the Star of Bethlehem grew dim. The mysterious magic of the season was focused mostly on the children. The darkened shadows of winter evenings, where the flickering light was provided by oil lamp, candle or by fire flames, was an appropriate setting for the numerous Christmas stories and legends. An odd ghost story thrown in would send most children to bed wide-eyed. The home would get an extra good clean or repair, or even whitewashed. The holly and ivy would decorate the plentiful pictures. The windows and ceilings, some breathtaking coloured paper decorations might be sent from America or England. The cleaned house would have the chimney cleaned out in order that Santa could have a clean entry with his presence or maybe to make safer the larger than usual fires necessary for the period. The Christmas pudding in a muslin cloth would take hours and hours to cook. There was no white flour in Ireland during the war time and one had to sieve the so-called flour through a silk stocking to eliminate the bran. It was only silk or lyle stockings then nylon had not been introduced until the Americans came to England and Northern Ireland. The church would get a heavenly shine, the altar decorated, St Anthony's quiet smile turned to a grin. The organ and choir practice began early on. Hosanna was in the highest and the bell hit the loudest note. Solemn high mass at 6.30 a.m. on Christmas morning would be crowded. Some people would have been up early, some would have had Mass at 11.30 with hymns and a procession to the crib. The robed priest and altar boys presented a nice picture. The area of Kodov supplied many of the altar boys, perhaps the further from the church, the nearer to God. In the early years, Turkey would have been very plentiful. Many people reared a pig to kill at Christmas. A cooked chicken or a roast of beef would have suited the very taste. A slice of Christmas cake, rich in flavour and icing, would finish the day's eating. For the men folk, the drink might last a little longer. A man has to be neighbourly and one might offend if they refused a drink. The whist drives with turkey prizes had been popular. Many a family were lotto lifted by dad winning a turkey. The games of the day revolved around the Santa gifts. Snakes and ladders, Ludo, dolls, tin whistles, cards, guns and imagination, the endless youth of energy. People were happy with a lot less in those days. At night, some houses celebrated with music, self-made or by winding the gramophone. New records were purchased for Christmas, costing nine pence or one shilling in old money. There were no television, no radios. People were happy. It was the sad heart that didn't rejoice. In early times, the holiday period was short except for school children's break. Since Stephen's day, the mummers groups with their many and varied rhymes would call to the houses to entertain and hope to get payment of some kind. Various disguises of voices and dress would attempt to prevent recognition for one reason or another. It was excitement of the uncertain which would be remembered. In the far distant days, Christmas provided a welcome interruption to the grind of existence and severe season. What does Christmas provide today?